welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time we're going to test out Twister OS. This is an increasingly popular operating system for the Raspberry Pi and features many different interface themes. Twister OS also includes Box86 and Wine so it can run some DOS and even Windows applications on your Raspberry Pi. So, Let's go and take a closer look. Right, here we are on twisteros.com where twisteros is made available for us by Pi Labs. And whereas you can see the main goal of twisteros is to provide a true desktop computing experience for an SBC with the operating system including various themes, applications, tools and optimizations to help us get the most out of a single board computer. If we look across the downloads, you can see there's various options here. You might want to know that Twister OS is based on the latest version of Raspberry Pi OS and it's quite a heavy operating system so it's most suited for a Raspberry Pi 4 or a Raspberry Pi 400. And as you can see, there's a full version or a light version. This said, we don't just have to use the Raspberry Pi 4, we can also use the user interface of Twister OS on a desktop or laptop PC, and may well try that in a future video. And there's also an Armbian version available for RK3399 based single board computers. But for now, I'll stick with the full version of Twister OS for Raspberry Pi 4, which we can download over there. And there we are on the download screen, we can click on download. And I've already downloaded the file, as you can see here, it's sitting up there. So I'll just cancel on that, I won't download it again. And I'll go to my desktop where I've run up the Lena Etcher and I'm going to select the image like that. There we are and open. I've inserted a nice fast SanDisk Extreme Pro micro SD card, which has been picked up here in Etcher. So I can now flash Twister OS to that card for our Raspberry Pi. Do we want to do it? Yes, we do. And in the blink of a robot's eye, our micro SD card will be ready to insert into this very excited 4 gigabyte Raspberry Pi 4. Right, here we are booting into Twister OS and this isn't quite the first boot because I have got in and changed a few display settings to make things work better on video. But what you're seeing here is pretty much what you see when you first boot Twister OS. <laughs> And here we are arriving on the desktop. Welcome to Twister OS, it says. And as you can see, there's a lot going on here. This is not like booting into your average Raspberry Pi operating system. For a start, on the top right, we've got a display up here which displays all kinds of system information. And we can see here things like temperature, CPU utilization, how much file space we've got left, things like that. And then on the panel at the top here, we've got standard icon as we normally have on the, a system, nothing particularly exciting there. Although here we can see the frequency of the processor and how it's running. If we look down at the bottom of the screen, you'll see we've got a launcher. So we can launch things down here as we can on various operating systems. There, for example, is the LightPad application launcher. If I click on that, we can uh, launch applications. There we are, masses and masses of applications pre-installed on this system. If I just flick through all the things there, that's a uh, rather cool, and I can press escape to come out of that. Across on the left of the screen, there are icons for various things, trash can, discords there, we've got my Android there, looks interesting, doesn't it? We've got a RetroPie, we've got the Steam Linux x86 client for gaming, we've got Lutris for gaming as well, we've got Commander Pi for system information and overclocking, and down here we've got a Theme Twister, which is an application for changing the OS theme, which we'll look at in the next segment of the video. Let's also take a brief look in the menu here. You'll see we've got lots and lots of applications pre-installed. This is a packed distro, that's the whole point. Loads and loads of accessories. What's a lot of accessories there? Uh, games, quite a bit here under gaming. Then if we look under graphics down there, you'll see we've got PhotoGimp. Let's just run up PhotoGimp. PhotoGimp is a version of the GNU image manipulation program, the Photoshop clone, but with a Photoshop-like interface, as you'll see when it runs up. There we are. And as you can see, this looks just like Photoshop with a toolbox over here and all the different options and things over there. It's nice to have that included in the Twister OS. And also down here, we were looking under graphics, we had what, internet, 
Discord's there, as you can see. Twister OS web apps. I don't know what those are. I will find out. Multimedia, various things. Office, as you would expect. Loads of settings. Loads and loads and loads and loads and loads of settings and various things available under system. So it's like a sort of treasure trove, isn't it? You, you launch Twister OS and you know you've got lots to investigate for a long period of time. And then finally, in the middle of the screen, we've got the Welcome to Twister OS dialog here, where we'll just go through what's here. First of all, Raspberry Pi configuration. This is the sort of thing you normally do when you boot up Raspberry Pi OS, which should be fairly straightforward. This is very familiar. If you've used Raspberry Pi OS, you can configure your display, different interfaces turned on, performance, setting things like the GPU memory, etc. I'll just uh, cancel on that for now. So we'll assume that's okay. We've then got an updater. We can update if we wish. Again, I'll do that later on. And we've got the ability to choose our theme. So if I click on that, this is very exciting. If we click on next on that, you can see different themes, which are the one we start with, but we've also got Twister 95, Twister XP, Twister 7, Twister 10, to make Twister OS look like Windows 95, Windows XP, Windows 7, and for some bizarre reason, if you wanted to do it, Windows 10. And then we've also got a couple of Mac focused themes as well. So I think here I'm going to go for, I think, let's go for Twister XP, click on that one. There we are, it's having a little think. Will it do this in real time for us? It will. That's rather impressive. And to continue, and hopefully, is it doing a reboot? It is doing a reboot. I thought it might. Let's give it a second to do that. And there we are. We've now got Twister OS running, looking like Windows XP. So I'll just get rid of this and uh, presume the menu looks like Windows XP. It does. This is rather impressive. And I think we'll look through all the different themes in the next segment of the video. Greetings. Here I am back again, still running Twister XP as my theme, although I've played with the font sizes again to make things more to my liking. And I've also altered the mouse pointer to have a slightly larger mouse pointer when available in the Twister XP. So let's look at some of the other themes which are available. We'll close that down and we'll go across to Twister 95, or in other words, what a computer should really look like. The menus here are now classic Windows style. This is the same settings I still use in, in Windows 7. Very, very comfortable with this. You might notice that the panel or the taskbar can't be scaled in line with all the other elements in these different themes, but it's still very impressive. And I don't really want to come out of this particular theme because I like this theme so much, but we will go and look at some of the other themes. So let's now launch the Twister 7 theme. And this is once again, beautifully implemented. Look at the icons down here on the taskbar and the menu beautifully put together to resemble an older version of Windows. Let's just launch what's down there, the icon for notepad. Of course, it's mousepad here in Linux, but look, the look and feel is, is beautifully done, isn't it? And uh, let's launch a file manager. Again, it looks like we would expect it to look. So let's now try out Twister 10. And here we are. And this theme is interesting because it looks like Windows 10, but it works better than Windows 10 because the menu actually gives you access to the applications in just the way that Windows 10 itself doesn't, which is, uh, I think, uh, rather ironic, isn't it? There, there we are. And again, icons down the bottom. Let's launch again the uh, notepad equivalent, mouse pad, the file manager. It's, it's a great implementation of uh, the Windows 10 interface here in Twister OS. So as you might recall, there are a few themes left. Let's just go along, remind you what they are. We've got an iTwister, which is a Mac theme. So let's try that. And here we are, we now very much look like a Mac. This seems to lag slightly, this interface compared to the others. Maybe it's got more work to do, but it's still very nicely implemented, great attention to detail. And uh, it is extraordinary to think we're still running on our four gigabyte Raspberry Pi from a micro SD card. So let's try the very last interface theme, which is iTwister Sir. And once again, we've got a very Apple feel to our desktop. Everything's running very nicely. Just go down to the launcher, for example, and it comes up. 
in a second. Little, again, little, little delay in, in these uh, Apple clone themes, but they still work beautifully. Very, very nice attention to detail as we've seen all the way through. And running these interfaces very much makes me appreciate not just how good Pi Labs have been in creating Twister OS, but how far the Raspberry Pi itself has come. These days, people still go, oh, you can't use the Raspberry Pi as a small desktop PC. You clearly can. And running an operating system like Twister OS very much drives that point home. And so let's go back to the original Twister OS theme. And uh, here we are. I've got the dock version selected so we can just see the difference. It's rather wacky, isn't it? And the final thing I want to do is to run up a browser, the Chromium browser down there on the launcher, so we can do a bit of browser-based YouTube playback, because I always do, and so many people want to see that in the video looking at a Pi operating system. So I'll get this running full screen. And here we are running full screen and 1080p. And it's not too bad. There are some drop frames, as we can see up in Stats for Nerds uh, up at the top corner. But this is, this is pretty good. Remember, Twister OS is based on Raspberry Pi OS, which has got pretty good browser-based streaming media playback. And we're getting that kind of performance reflected here in Twister OS. Now, you might remember that back in the introduction, I said that Twister OS had various software installed for running at least some DOS and even Windows applications on a Raspberry Pi. And if we look in the menu and we look under games, we can see what's here. We've got DOSBox sitting there for running DOS applications, but we've also got Box86 and Wine here for potentially running Windows applications. And what you need to do is to run the updaters here, which take a little while and stress out the pine. It gets rather warm, but they run through automatically. And then you can run the Wine configuration to set things up for Wine, which uh, will come up in a second. I'll do this in real time so you can see how long it takes things to come up. Come on, you can do it. Give it encouragement. Please run up Wine configuration. There it is. So you can configure Wine and set things up and add applications as we do in Wine. And you end up with, if I look here in the file manager, you can see we end up with our virtual C drive. And uh, if we look inside there, you'll see this thing set up here for running some Windows applications, hopefully, in Wine via emulation of x86 on a LARM-based processor on a Raspberry Pi, which is extraordinary, really. And what I've done is to install Adobe Audition 1.5, which is a Windows application. So I'm going to run that up and you can see that it actually works. And this was fairly painless to set up. Once I've done all the updating, things like sound works straight out of the box. And here we are, booting Adobe Audition on a Raspberry Pi. Isn't that amazing? I am really, really impressed with this. And if we go down here and we pull in, say, a file, it loads in and you can work on this. This is perfectly usable. I am very impressed with how far the Raspberry Pi has come and how far Twister OS is helping us use the Raspberry Pi in new and exciting ways. And so I think to close this segment, all I have to do is to press the space bar and to play this music file. As we've seen in this video, Twister OS is an impressive operating system for a Raspberry Pi 4 or Pi 400 and delivers on its promise of allowing people to get more out of their favourite SBC. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.